What's up guys, this is Jake from Fish Tech, and today we're gonna to be talking about the new Vega 16 versus the Vega 20. Now, most people are just like, oh, just get the Vega 20, but you never know. So we're gonna take a look at a bunch of benchmarks and we're gonna to get to the bottom of this. Is the Vega 16 even worth considering or should you just skip it and go right to the Vega 20? Uh, most of our benchmarks are gonna be in games to show the graphical performance differences between the two, uh, but we will look at a Geekbench 4 test, and you might be asking, where did we get these benchmarks? Because most people just don't have the finances to go and buy a MacBook Pro with Vega 16 in it. It's incredibly difficult uh, to find stuff, so I did the research, so you didn't have to. But we get an article from a French company, and we also have uh, videos from VTudio, Ash with VTudio, uh, so if you want to find out more about the Vega 16, go watch his two videos in-depth reviews. Uh, but we're going to compare the two today. Let's get into some benchmarks. So taking a look at some older games, we got two games, Batman, Arkham City, and F1 2013. Both of these games run off of the OpenCL um, API. So uh, these games, you're not going to see as much of a performance difference. Uh, because this is on some older architecture um, game engines. So taking a look at Batman Arkham City, we get a difference of 7% between the 560X and the Vega 16 on the low end, with up to a 16.4% increase. The 560 versus the Vega 20, we get between 11 and 35%. Uh, that's a pretty big difference. Now, comparing the Vega 16 to 20, we get about a 4 to 16% increase uh, with the Vega 20. Taking a look at F1 2013, the Vega 16 gets between a 7 to 12% increase over the 560, uh, whereas the Vega 20 is a consistent 10% increase. The Vega 16 and Vega 20 perform almost identical on this benchmark. Now, if we start looking at some newer games that are on the metal architecture, uh, we actually see some crazy improvements between the Vega 16 and Vega 20. Tomb Raider, we see a performance increase of between 37 to 39% on average from the Vega 16 to 560, and the Vega 20 has a nearly 56% increase over the 560. Uh, this gives the Vega 20 about 12 to 13% increase over the Vega 16. Moving on to Dirt Rally, the performance increase is crazy on this game. The Vega 16 gets between 74 and 89% increase over the 560. That is insane. And the Vega 20 is an 83 to 97% increase. That is nearly double the frame rates. Um, surprisingly, the difference between the Vega 16 and the Vega 20 is about 4 to 5%. Now with Deuce X Mankind Divided, we get about between a 50 to 65% increase from the Vega 16 to the 560X. And with the Vega 20, we get between 69 and 80% increase, giving the Vega 20 roughly 9 to 13% over the Vega 16. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, we get similar results with a 65 to 78% increase from the Vega 16 over the 560X. Uh, and the Vega 20 gets between 74 and 87 percent increase over the 560X, giving the Vega 20 about a 5 percent performance boost over the Vega 16. Looking at the Geekbench uh, for metal test, the Vega 16 gets about a 10 percent increase over the 560X, and the Vega 20 gets about 10 percent over the Vega 16. Now, when we talk about pricing, the Vega 16 configuration is priced about 9% higher than the 560X, but you're getting, you know, you could be getting between 50 and 65, up to 75% increase depending on what game you're playing or, yeah, you know, you're not going to get those kinds of increases in your daily application, application life, like, uh, you know, Photoshop or 
Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, but you will get performance increases over the 560X. And if gaming is your thing on the side after you're done with your work, uh, these Vega cards are definitely going to be worth it. Comparing the Vega 20 uh, with the Vega 16, that can be a tough call because some performances are very similar between the two cards. The Vega 20 is an extra $100. Now this is different than, let's say like the i7 versus the i9, uh, because on those tests, they're, they're basically performing exactly the same. This is a little bit more interesting where, you know, we're getting on average between, you know, five and 10% increase from the Vega 16 with the Vega 20. Reasons to get the Vega 16 would be uh, you are trying to save money and you don't need the best performance, uh, but maybe you want to still game on the side. Um, and you can save a hundred bucks and that's a totally reasonable conclusion. Another reason would be you want less heat in your machine. Um, with the Vega 16, you're most likely going to get lower temperatures and that CPU can make use uh, with the boost clock a little bit more. So if you need more of a CPU intense workload, you can uh, get the Vega 16 for a great performance graphical boost and a slight boost in your CPU performance. Uh, reasons to get the Vega 20 would be if you uh, really want the best performance, you don't really care about the extra $100. Uh, to me, it makes sense to go for the Vega 20 just because it's only an extra $100 and the performance you're getting uh, well outperforms the amount that you're paying for the graphics card. So if this video helped you out, be sure to like it. If you didn't like the video, then dislike it uh, and make sure to comment down below uh, what you would have liked to seen me do better to help you guys out. And uh, if you wanna get more MacBook Pro updates, make sure to subscribe. Uh, thank you guys for watching.